You're welcome to Powerful Gospel Ministry Living Proof Family, situated at number 23 Shalom Street off Owumide Street of Barrack Road, Carwash Bus Stop, Egbeda Idumu Road, Egbeda Lagos. Come and join us as we fellowship with His Holy Anointed Apostle Julius Osazua Osifu in his dynamic and liberating messages. Meeting holds on Sunday, treasure based service from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Tuesday, Bible Expository Service, 6 p.m. Wednesday, Wednesday for Wonders Counseling and Deliverance Hours from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Thursday, Breakthrough Service from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. Solution Night Summit, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. For prayer and counseling, contact 080-3359-2416. Come and be blessed.
You are a mighty God. You are the ancient of days. I call you Jesus, the master of the world. Leviticus 26. Amen. Leviticus 26, verse 9. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. Verse 10. And ye shall eat old stuff and bring forth the old because of the new and i will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you and i will walk among you and i will be your god and ye shall be 
my people. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful. You are going to say, my father, my maker, let this your word be fulfilled in my life. Make me fruitful in every area. Can somebody pray that prayer? My father, my maker, let this your word that you have said in Leviticus 26 verse 9 that you will have respect unto us and you will make us fruitful in every area. Lord, make me fruitful in every area. Make me fruitful in every area, Lord. Let your word be fulfilled in my life, in my home. Make me fruitful in every area. Can somebody pray that prayer for him? So I said this morning, my father, my maker, the lover of my soul, make me fruitful in every area, every area of my life. Make me fruitful, Lord. Make me fruitful, Lord. Financially, materially, Father, make me fruitful in my home, in my marriage. Make me fruitful. Make me fruitful, Lord. Make me fruitful, Lord. This is your word. Let it be seen in my life. Let it be accomplished in my life. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Did you people know when prophecy is coming? Amen. This is a prophecy from the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. Say, I will make you fruitful. This is the word of the Lord. I multiply you and establish my covenant with you. You are going to say, my father, my maker. My father, my maker. Your word is coming to me this morning. Saying you will multiply me. Saying you will establish me. Father, confirm your word in my life. Go ahead and begin to declare it upon yourself. Thus says the Lord, it will make you fruitful. It will, it will make you to multiply. And it will establish you. This is a strong prophet this morning. God is prophesying it upon the house of this morning. God is saying it this morning to everyone hearing the sound of this microphone that you shall be fruitful. You shall what establish. You will be what blessed. Oh, Lord, let your word be fulfilled in my life. God is saying, I will multiply you. I will multiply you. That business will multiply. That work will multiply. I will multiply you. I will establish you. You shall be fruitful. You shall be fruitful. You shall be fruitful. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Hear this. You had the testimony of this morning. A young graduate, God just make it to be fruitful. And I say, you will be established in that work. Through you, this is international company. Through you, many will be employed here. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know where God is? God has started with you. But it is true with you, brethren. Nothing, nothing can amount to something. It takes God to do it. Hallelujah. I had an experience December 26. I was sharing it with a prayer band of Friday. Amen. That 26, 27, I found that the Lord, it was about traveling to come back to the state. There was no fuel. Amen. There was no fuel. You know, a call I just rendered to a brother here. He said, Mama, please say whatsoever you could say. Because that place is far. Another thought come to me. Call this brother again. I call the brother. Amen. I called the brother and he said, Mama, say whatsoever you want to say. Because the children said, Mommy, take us out. I said, okay. Me, I want to take you for to Bagada. Because the brother session is in Bagada. I packed all of them inside the car. I called Brother Ken. We all went. Hallelujah. I want to tell you why me and the pastor were always praying for every one of you. Your greatness is our greatness. I was at gate close to the Philly station because he's a manager there. You see hefty men, hefty women me to bring me in. See the women, all to three, the men coming to invite to Bracken and say, I'm, my kids are there. Bracken was even saying, so who are those ones coming to? I said, mom is around. It is my son that is in charge there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When I look at myself, because my son is inside, I was being honored. If my son was not there, I would not be honored there. Sons and daughters of power flow, 
our fa- your father, our, me, your mother, the pastor, we are declaring upon you, you shall be great on earth. This big country, this big, big, big country in Nigeria, no one that power flows, sons and daughters will not be found. You, brethren, anytime I remember that day, I feel grateful to God. Because of my own, my son is there. You shall be in that great part. That is why this prophecy is called. He said, I will multiply you. You shall be great. I will have respect for you. You shall be great. I will establish you. I decree and I declare. Upon, upon everyone hearing this sound of this microphone, you shall be great on earth. God will multiply your business. Will multiply whatsoever you are doing. In the name of Jesus, God will take you to that enviable destiny that the whole world will see. I pray for you. As you are there, you will not forsake God. As you are there, I say it with body, you will not forsake God. You will return all the glory to God. As the church say. Just to make you what he wants to make out of you. It has been a month with a teaching of thou award lose. Lose, in, lose into greatness. Lose into enviable destiny. Lose into unusual job, unusual promotion, unusual testimony. There's something which the Lord has concluded to do which nothing can stop. 
I just I keep saying, because what I see in the atmosphere in the rest of the spirit, abundance. Abundance. It's just for your heart to be open to the things God has for you. Today I'm speaking on the topic, you and your foundation. I want to use it to round up this teaching of this month of thou are what loose. Because if there's anything that is fundamental, it is what? The foundation. And Jesus said, thou are what? Loose. So when Christ has loose you, is there any foundational thing that can hold you back? Is somebody listening? There's no foundational thing that can hold you back. Amen. Thank God for the amazing testimonies. You see the testimony of that brother. He, he made one of among the same men said, if you are close to daddy, daddy is a man with few words. And that is a fact. I select my words before I talk. I meditate before I communicate. But you know, even some of you have made me talkative. <laughs> and still, I have talk and talk still. Praise the Lord. And that is my real person. Few words. I said, let me begin to talk. Let me begin to talk. That's so that we can hear. You have made me talkative. And even in the midst of that talk, talk, all the words are what? Selected. Careful. It's my prayer that they enter you in the name of Jesus. You are your foundation. Say to the person, but you don't sit down yet. Say it again. Hallelujah. I think that testimony is very, very important even to the teachings of today. Important. If you look at the, the week, he said he was called for that day's thing. He said, I called him and said, you are the youth world leader, president. And when he was talking about job, I said, yes, even heaven no, you can't do this thing without a job. Possible. You can't do it without a job. You need job, you need finance to do it. But I now said to him, many are not getting their prayer answered because they pray and miss. They are not praying the, the right prayers. I said, go and pray like this. You know, when I do save my father, my maker, I don't know whether you understand the mysteries of that world. My father, my maker. Do you know there is a purpose he created you? He created you for a purpose. My maker. I say, go and talk to your maker like this. There's a reason why you are created. Without revelation, what did I say? Without revelation, plain in scripture. So people will say as simple as ABCD, but we don't know whether it is ABCD is simple. As plain. God created everyone to serve him. To fulfill his purpose. I was teaching last Sunday why some people tarry in entanglement. Because they, when they deviate from the liberation pattern, from the things God loose them to be what doing. He created you for a purpose. I said, just talk to God. Lord, I need this work to serve you more. Now that I'm even a youth leader, so that I will be a blessing to your work, a blessing to the youth. Those who are, would have not come without transport, I don't need to pray. To give them what? Transport. I said, so you need a good job. Not just a job. You know that some job you have, you'll still be looking for transport. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah, they work now. They work now. <laughs> Amen. Oh, sure, the driver have 
finish all the money, so <laughs> it's left with nothing. <laughs> Amen. I said, just go and pray like this, and you'll get it. And upon that went. There are bad. Even when at a stage, everybody's not be, people are not being knocked out. Say, are you that is not even what an engineer? What are you doing here? I say, continue with that foundational word, prayer. What God have destined because of the work in your hands. I'm speaking to somebody here today because you are created for a purpose. Amen. You are what? Created for a purpose. And that is the mandate of power flow. To liberate what? Creations. Revive them and return them to the original intent. Original intent to break forth on every side is a month of thou award loose. You must be loose into your greatness today. Anything in your foundation that is holding you back, you are breaking loose out of it. You are breaking loose out of it in the name of Jesus. Sit down. Hallelujah. You and your foundation. Today, when you talk of foundation, you are your fund when you talk of foundation in church, in mean in in the church, the place might go to is what if you if you were to read the mind of everybody in, in the church in the in the, in the large congregation in, in the body of christ once you talk you raise foundation prayer let's pray concerning our foundation you raise the prayer and say let's pray concerning our foundation 99 percent mind eh we go to evil foundation what the pastor just said let's pray concerning our foundation I don't know if you are listening. Say, so let's pray concerning our foundation. 99% will go toward evil foundation. Say, so this foundational thing is holding us back. Only 1%. Mind we go to issue of what? Even that there is what? A godly foundation. Why would 99% might go to evil foundation? Because why? Those are the things we are too what used to. That's what is happening around us. Dealing with evil foundation, holding us back, holding our blessing, holding our finance, holding our breakthrough, holding our marriages, bringing our back on timely death, cutting people short. Ah, because there are some foundational things in that lineage. You see people dying unnecessarily. You see some not marrying early. You see some not getting good job, not getting breakthroughs. Because those are the things that are what? Very, very paramount. Those are the things that is happening in the time. In fact, that is where we are coming from. <laughs> Amen. That's where we are what? Coming from. But... We are going somewhere to fulfill destiny, to fulfill purpose, to be everything God wants us to be. I was saying to the ministers we are raising now, is somebody listening to me? Praise the Lord. I was saying to the minister we are raising now, I said, do we know all these foundations of the devil and manipulations that it is artificial? It's artificial. The original one is that of what? God. It's artificial. If the devil could uproot the original one, what of the artificial? It's easier to uproot, to uproot artificial thing than uprooting original thing. But thank God for Jesus. That's why I was cut off when we were saying Jesus, the master of the universe. My spirit was lost in the... The master of the universe. Because this is the week that he paid the ultimate price. Can somebody shout hallelujah? 
This is the week he suffered the, the, the suffering you can never imagine. This is the week he sacrificed everything. This is the week he gave it all so that we can take dominion of our foundation. You are the determinants because Christ has done what he should do concerning us, concerning our life. It's for you to know that Christ is counting on you to uproot the artificial foundation and plant what? A new foundation. A new foundation. So when we are talking about foundation, it has to do with the beginning of a thing. It is the genesis. The fundamentals of everything has to do with the roots. Foundation. And foundation determine the extent anything can go. So if you get a clear picture of that, if there is anything that we use foundation more, it is in building. Hallelujah. If there is anything any structure or any feed, they use foundation more. It is in what? When it comes to building. So, when it comes to building. And for you to understand that, when you look at building, you understand foundation, the, the meaning more. Hallelujah. When you now understand it from the angle of building structures, it makes you understand foundation many more. Because in building, the depth of the foundation will determine the height the building will go. Hallelujah. In building, how solid the foundation will be will determine how durable the house we will stay. That's why when Jesus wants to even talk about foundation and establishment, let's look at Luke 6 47. Luke 6. Luke 6 47. He said, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying, are you there? Luke 6 47. Amen. He said, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Whosoever heareth, follow this words joylessly. Whosoever word cometh to me, first thing. You have come. Does this stop in I go to church? I come to church? No. Whosoever come to me, one, two, hear it, my saying. You are not hearing. There's one another place we're talking about hearing and what doing. Hearing and doing. John 14 21. We're talking about not even doing. Look at the next statement here. Whosoever come to me, hear it, my say, and do it then. That's why I do say it without number. Jesus don't joke with words. And that's what I try to imitate. Hallelujah. Many of you have heard me say it. That's what I think I, that thing I try to imitate also. A child of God should not be joking with words. Because words are very important and powerful. And hear it, my saying. That's the third one. The third one said, and do it then. He said, I will show you to whom he is like. He used building to describe such person. Because he wants to talk about foundation. Verse 48. He said, he is like a man which built an house and dig deep. He's like a man who did what? Who built an house and dig what? deep and laid his foundation on a rock and when the flood 
arose. Was there flood? Can somebody respond? Was there flood that gets the house? When the flood arose, when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon what? A rock. It founded upon a good foundation, upon a godly foundation. He said, when the flood arose, the stream broke against the house and could not shake it because it had been well built. Because it was well built. That is NIV, well built. Then verse 49. But he that heareth, but he that heareth, did you see that? He's hearing. He's coming to the church. He's hearing. He's coming to the church. He's hearing. He listens at home. He hears. And do it not. It's like a man that is without a foundation built and has upon the edge. Against which the stream did beat vehemently. And immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was what? Great. The man comes. But one he hear it, is hearing. But he's not doing. It's like a man that built his house on a ground without what? A foundation. When the stream break against it, immediately it fell. And the ruin of the house was what? Great. Great. Both the hears. One was doing, one was not what doing. Both had challenges. Stream, the, the wind came to both. The flood came to both. The wind came to both. Challenges came to both. But one fair. One was still what? Standing. Standing. So, I say, when you want to understand things foundation, you go to building. You understand that the foundation you lay determine how a structure will go. Determine how it, it will survive challenges and trials. So, set goals to everything. Today, just as I said, when we say, let's pray because our foundation. Many, 99% in the church will start praying, Father God, anything in my foundation, make him not to prosper, make him not to do this, contend with my marriage, contend with my, with, with my longevity, contend with my finance, contend with my wife, all over. We are dealing with what? Well, those are evil world foundation. Because most of our parents, Africa, nations, laid some foundations ignorantly without knowing that are attached to war to the devil. But do you know that with Christ in your life, you can lay a new foundation? Hallelujah. Those are the people I am sent on earth to raise. When I was on a crusade 2001, liberating some villages in the those states, that crusade took me one month, one week. Because I was staying one, one week in each of the villages. I think if you want to talk of foundation, foundation is not in cities, it's in the village. Praise the Lord. So, then, I didn't know, Pafla have not even started that time. I didn't know the extent of the assignment God have ahead of me. All I knew that year, I said, my son, go and liberate these places. Liberate them where you liberated your village. So I embarked on that assignment. One month, one week crusade. From village to village. We are moving massively, bulldozing the whole place. When I was in the fifth village, the Lord gave me a scripture. Isaiah 58, verse 4. Can we go there? Hallelujah. That is even the theme of Iba today. Isaiah 58, verse 4. 
Amen. Isaiah 58, verse 12. If you are there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, I read. Isaiah 58, 12. In that fourth village, the Lord took me to this place. Say, my son, Isaiah 58, 12. When I opened, when I studied, he said, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. They shall raise up the foundation of many generations. And they shall be called the repairer of the bridge and the restorer of the path to dwell in. Hallelujah. He said, they that will be of thee. I thought, but those in dealing with foundational stronghold across those villages. With the move of God, with the power of God. The Lord said to me, my son, they that will be of thee. They will build the old waste places. Oh, waste places. That there are things that have been exchanged, that are wasteful, things that have been wasted. That you are the one, you that is connected to me. So I speak to somebody's life now. Wherever you are in any part of the world, home and abroad, in any part of the earth, this is a prophetic word concerning you. Because the Lord have long spoken to thee, said, They that will be of thee, they will build the old waste places. So you are the one to build the old waste places. So, when we are talking of old waste places, when I, you can look at your family, or timely death, people are being cut short instead of living long life. That is not God's agenda. That is old waste places. You can look at your family, there's poverty smelling. You know when poverty is not smelling? Praise the Lord. The Bible said in Proverbs, even the friend of a poor man run from him. Yeah. Smelling. Old waste places. But be a generational baptism upon the lineage. That nothing good will come out. Poverty is smelling all over. But God is saying, you are the one that we build that old waste place. Because you are going to put a stop to that poverty spirit, to that poverty agenda, and in you prosperity will start. Can somebody stand up and say amen? amen. You are the one to put a, a stop to that poverty spirit, that old serpent, that old devil, and then prosperity starts from you. People have been dying. They say when people reach 60 in the family, they die. Between 50 and 60, they die. That is not God's agenda. Those are old waste places. Those could be foundation, foundational issues in your family. You don't know the covenant they entered in time past. But we are saying today, you and your foundation. God is expecting you to change what? Your foundation. From such manipulations. Build the old waste places. So that through you, that dying early will stop. Amen. Living old will not start. Amen. Is somebody getting that? Those are the liberation mandates. That the liberation grace. And that through you, longevity will not start. Is it that among the first thing God bless people with, marriage is honorable in the sight of God. That is the first institution God instituted. And nothing is happening like that in your lineage. Just as we have seen men in here. They will say, yes, I've been the first person, the first graduate in the family. I've been the first person to marry gloriously in the family. Just as we have had many testimonies here. That is what building the old ways places. You have put a stop to that agenda and you have started a new world agenda. That's why I said they will build the old ways places and they will lay one foundation for many generations. Lay foundation for many generations. So that's why you need to understand what is before you. 
Those are some things that were crying in my spirit. When I saw, when I, I, so I, I, when I was born, I grew up to me that my dad was doing well. Because I've said the story to many of us several times. And at the long run, the force of darkness brought him down. A man that was building his, the best house in his village, when there was nothing like smelt block, he said he wants to build one, could do jammer floor at that time, a lot of pillars in the house at that time, in the early 70s, when there was nothing like smelt block in my village, the force of darkness said, here, yeah, we don't need such. They hung him, hung his work, hung his business, hung his finance. Hung his head. He was now battling with his head and at the long run. By the time he now survived the head issue, business, finance, everything gone. Within five, six years, the same man who was building his, the best house in his village have to now return to that village. He couldn't even survive staying in the city again. And started farming just to survive. And poverty. In my eyes, because I'm the first son, I saw the whole drama. Things turned for Batty. And after 10 years, he died. Now, understanding such a thing, I, and God opened my eyes that this is devil's agenda. This is poverty planted. That was when I started declaring from the village, Lord, I will be great on earth. I will build glorious home. I will build amazing houses. I will do great things. I will step in glorious place. I was not declaring because my eyes were now open to the word of God, to scriptures, to know that the devil turned things around him, that that was not God's plan. And then I said to myself, I'm the end to this poverty, and I'm the beginning of prosperity. The foundation of prosperity. They that we will be of thee, we build the old waste places. They will lay foundation for many world generations. And I have not started, but people have already seen it. I don't even understand what I just said. I never even start. But people have already seen what God is doing. Jesus. So, so, Look at this chapter verse 12. An English standard version said, and, you, and your ancient ruin shall be rebuilt, and you will raise up the foundation of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the bridge and the restorer of the street to dwell in. You and your foundation. If Christ said you are loose, you are loose already. So don't walk into entanglement. Don't give yourself to things that will draw you back. Stand firm in that liberty. Wherein Christ has war, set you free. Start making impact. Don't give up. That's why some of us at the midst of it will not give up. Because maybe you have been praying, you have been partaking, convenating, sowing seed. The things are not changing yet. You want to reverse. There's no breakthrough in another way. Amen. If you observe, you are coming out. It's just that some of us, we don't sit down to look at where you are coming from. Amen. If you can sit down and look at where you are what, coming from, you will know that you are no longer there. It's just that you are not where you are going yet. So you need to be courageous. You need to be strong. You need to keep focus. And keep pressing on. Because God has spoken it. It must be accomplished in your life. So, yell and do. You keep moving from glory to world to glory. Lay foundation for many generations. So, you are the one that will plant the foundation of that prosperous marriage. You are the one that will plant the foundation of that long, longevity. Yeah. Fear no debt. Christ has taken over already. Revelation 1 18. He said, I'm he that was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. You have the key of life and death settled. 
the race to keep for so know that, know that those are the foundation you are to lay. So, all you need to keep doing as you are hearing, keep doing. Do you know another strategy of the devil to offend people out of a liberation grace and a liberation mandate? Amen. When he found out that he have tried everything, he cannot lay hold of you. He say, ah, now go there, so he don't free you. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. Say, ah, he want to not disconnect you from the place where you are being world secured. That will not be your portion. People you are leading will not offend you at. People leading you will not offend you at. You will keep focus. Keep focus. Discipline yourself. Ready to bear. When Jesus told that woman, Ah, woman, I didn't come for you. I can't give the bread of children to dogs. What did the woman tell Jesus? My son is sick. He's dying. Jesus, you are a healer. Come and pray for my son that I be healed. That was what the woman told Jesus. When Jesus said, woman, I can't give this healing that is meant for children to dogs. So who is he calling dog? Praise the Lord. But the woman was calm, patient, focused, and looked and said, Jesus, yes, sir, I know what you carry. I know the grace is here. So, if the children are eating on the table, crumb, that is small, small pieces, they fall from the table. The crumb do fall from the table, and the doors will pick it. I don't even need the bread on the table. Those one will fall for ground. Let me have it. And my stride will be healed. That's people who knows where they are coming from. Who knows where they are going. Amen. I told my son. You know, we had a meeting here, the last workers meeting. Where I said, some people will say, ah, yeah, Power Flow is a, a local church. Is this, it's not in this part here, it's not in that part here. I say, live there. Amen. I've been hearing it, but all that concerns me, I keep focus. It's a local church out of nothing. God planted us in the U.S. Amen. Out of nothing. I said, live there. My burden and prayer is that what God has raised for their liberation, the devil is stylishly pushing them away so that they don't get it. They don't get it. So be sensitive and your purpose will be fulfilled in life. He's a great God. That's why no, no confession can localize me. Hallelujah. No confession can localize me. The Lord who said to me, when Pablo has not even started in, in, in 94 in Agbo, said, my son, the way you have shaken this institution, the way you have shaken the foundations, the way you have made me known in this place, the way with my power you have held this campus to ransom. He said, that is how you are going to hold the war to ransom when the time comes. So why should I be bothered about somebody who is talking? Look at church. The same people under the international mandate of this ministry, they will come and be begging for a job. Yeah. Just focus. Keep doing what God wants you to do. What God has spoken. So that's how you hold the whole world to ransom with my power. That was 1994. Then, I don't even know, I will have a ministry called Power Flow. For people with my power. So, there are foundations God wants you to lay. So, open up your heart to be broken loose and be fulfilled. Amen. Within the week, I stumbled into a paper. It was a 2006 sticker like this. Behind it, I wrote a code number of uh, I wrote a code a code number of this money transfer Western Union. One of the money transfer legend. I can't remember which of them now. The code number 
and the amount. And how much was it? $3,350. That was sent to me for the crusade that year to do. $3,370. Then the dollar was 110 It was about $400 at that time. You know. With that crusade. I look at it, it was 206. I said, okay, the year we planted a whole church. 12 years ago. I, cal I calculated it now with the exchange rate, it's about 1.2 million. You know, 206. But lo and behold, the person God was using that time in those crusade issues moving. It was upon this mandate, God hid him amazingly, and he testified. When I want to even do crusade, I, I maybe hear of crusade, I say, Pastor Abed, don't even want to announce it in the, in the church. I'm going to leave cost. 400,000, I will send it. 300,000, I will send it. When we planted a hall, he, he, he was spent about 600 or something. He gave 300,000 that time. That's almost, uh, almost $3,000 too. Before the other ones was raised that was using, doing everything that consigned them. But at a stage, a greedy mother in law came in and some person in the church too who was also greedy and jealous, they now think that he is the one helping me. They didn't know that I am the one helping him. You can't help God. It's God that is helping us. The mother-in-law was so greedy. caused a lot of confusion. But the man was celebrating. Sickness that could not be cured in, in the part of the world. He's a medical doctor having two certificates from the United States. He's cool there. He's cool there. Then some people were taking in carriage drug. Because from here he booked his work. We just go three months, face his work day and night as a cardiologist. Especially as a medical doctor. I tell him, work for one month, sir. No. No. Two months, of course. He said, this, he said God offers. Once I have done God's will, God is always doing it. And God was moving him. Started testifying. He that they said he was afflicted on the leg, no cure all over the world. Upon this place, I prayed for him. God hid him. He testified. Those were around that time. I didn't even know he's a medical doctor when we were doing that. I didn't even know whether he has he, he have access to dollars. I didn't know. Oh my, I was doing the work of God. Many of you know here, some witches and wizards have stayed in my house. You are a witness. Canceling them, delivering them. Some we say, see our pastor, you know the fear. <laughs> this first way, whole village drive. Praise the Lord. They know. Handling them. That's just passionate about my work. Not all. And the long run, it was pulled out and deceived out. I was still following him up, trying to see, rescue him, rescue him. We have not even got to this place that we have not bought this property. Still trying to rescue him, cancel him, take up the patient, praying for him. The day I now reversed, you know what he told me that day? They are now reverse. He said, with my money, I can get any pastor to be praying for me. It was like a hammer on my head. Bah. I said, this guy thinks it's with money, me, money. They said, I'm even talking now to MF, MFM pastor, they're already even praying for me. I said, Baba, you send me again. I'm not going. So it's money, me, reverse. Because three years later, somebody now called. I said, ah, do you hear this man? I said, no, I don't even ask of him. He said, I saw him, but I said that leg sickness, that was he, that, that things were moving for him. Many years later, I came back, tried here and there, and at the long run, the leg was cut off. Another few years later, I got a call again that he said he's, he's dead. 
I saw that paper last week. I said, I said those were the things I'm saying that time. I was doing that. $3,350, 2006, during a whole crusade. A whole crusade. A whole will be 12 years by November this year. You know. You know. So, among the things that make him not to listen to all my carefulness, patience, he's trying, people now, is that pride entered. You know. They that will be of thee, we build the old waste places. We lay foundation for many generations. God brought you here so that you rewrite your foundation. Turn things around. And nothing can stop you. You will be great on earth. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, lay godly foundation. Because we have two types of foundation. Godly foundation and ungodly foundation. All we meant is the ungodly foundation. That one has passed. So, that one can no longer disturb you again. You are now in Christ. Lay a new world foundation. Let, let pride be far. Let the spirit of without me, nobody can do it be far. Let I'm the one in charge be far. Be humble. Let God take over you and turn your life around. So that you keep moving from what? From glory to glory. Lay a godly foundation. Romans 6, 16. To whom you yield yourself, you are one, a servant to obey. So when in this, the Lord will perfect what he wants to do concerning your life. Make you do all that you have destined concerning your life. Amen. Even in the godly foundation, there are levels. So lay a deep foundation in God. That you can do listening to the word of God, listening to counsel, listening to instruction, being all that God wants you to be. The grace is upon you because you are loose already. Loose into your fulfillment. Lose into your enviable destiny. The grace is upon you. If God said thou art loose, thou art what? Are loose. You will fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus. Don't be carried away with the little door God has opened for you. That nobody can say you again. You don't listen again. Because I look at that brother one day. I now told him, the person that is being led cannot tell who is leading you. Say, now you can't know the road pass. Amen. That spiritual issue. Amen. You that have been loose, listen more. Amen. God has blessed you with one thing. There's still another one ahead. So serve God more. Pray more. Be more obedient than ever before. The devil is a liar. Because it's not the will of God that any should want perish. That was why in the midst of, I can't even tell you the insult, the talk, everything. A lot of things. Even some people are not even taking care. Is it that I have some money is paying daddy every month? I laugh. I was just passionate about because I know what the devil can do. But at the time I use that word, with my money I can get I reversed 360 degree. So be wise and be focused. It's your share of exploit. Exploit doer you shall be on every side. Stand up as I declare upon you now. Exploit doer you shall be. You are breaking forth on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus. I break you loose from every bounds and shackles. I release unusual grace upon you. Testimonies of wonders. God will make a way where there's no way. If, if the testimony in that brother I just shared just now concerning that bank. At a say, even some people inside the bank already gave up. They were pushed aside. He was still going. At a say, when they now say, when we're not talking of the qualification now, you engineer, what are you doing in the banking sector? I said, 
Is this one word I'm praying? You are the youth leader. You need money. It doesn't have alternative. Even heaven knows. Don't have alternative. And the Lord, against all these challenges, delivered it. So, let God give you understanding of your prayer point to pray. When there's no selfish agenda in your prayer, when you pray prayer in line with God's word, some person, God would have prospered there and blessed them. Say, God, they, in that our family, they oppress us too much. Lord, when I have money, I'm going to show them. Because I never even give you, you are showing them. <laughs> and show them. Change your mentality, change your thinking. Think the way God will think. Think the way your pastor will think. Amen. Think. There are a lot of things in that. It's a year of exploit. Exploit you will manifest in Jesus' name. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I lose unusual grace upon you. You are breaking forth on every side. You will not be entangled. Peace upon you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.